Welcome back. Thank you again for joining me here at the Creating Awareness for Christ channel. I am Calvina Banner. Tonight, I got a song in my spirit tonight, but I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I'm not going to sing it, but I'm going to talk about it. Um, it's an old hymn that the mothers of the church that I grew up in used to sing a lot. And of course, back then, being a kid, I had no idea what they were talking about and what the song really, really meant. I'm like, uh, okay, how does this apply? I'm a human. So the hymn went like this. I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Now, that was the main chorus, and of course, in uh, Holiness Pentecostal churches, you know, we add our own verses to it and whatnot to, to change it up a bit. But the point was and is, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved, just like a tree that's planted by the waters. Now, this song, again, like I said, it's in my spirit today, um, been in my spirit over the last couple of weeks or so. And why is that, you might be asking. If you remember, maybe two months ago, I talked a little bit about deception and do not be deceived. I did a segment on that. And I feel so led to revisit that a little bit and to um, reiterate some of the points that were made there because we are just in those times. We're just in these times where Things are changing. Our moral compass is, is, is declining. Things are looking different, sounding different, and there is a propensity for us, people of God, to be deceived. All right. So back to the song, I shall not be moved. Um, you know, as I was saying that I had no clue what that meant back when I was, you know, six, seven and eight, nine years old, had no clue. But now I so know, I do know <laughs> exactly what that means. And actually, it's scriptural, comes out of scripture. Um, the scripture is actually Jeremiah 17, seven through eight. And I want to turn there real quick if I can find it. I didn't have it. I didn't bookmark it, so hang on one second so you guys are going to know how familiar I am with um, finding uh, Bible verses and whatnot. Um, so Jeremiah 17, I'm here. I am in Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. So let me read this scripture to you. All right, so it reads, Blessed be, sorry, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him. Verse eight says, they will be like a tree planted by the water and sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fail, fails to bear fruit. All right, so the emphasis again is on the portion that talks about being like a tree planted by the rivers of water who sends out its roots to the stream. So, you know, when a tree is planted and it grows, it, it, it takes root, right? So the stronger, the deeper, um, the more spread out the roots are, the more grounded that tree is. So if a wind comes through, a big, strong wind, it's not falling um, due, to the, to, due to the wind because the roots are, are grounded. They are in there. Um, so the tree... In the scripture, this is what it's talking about. They will not be moved, okay? When the heat comes, when the fear comes, when seasons of drought, the tree will not be moved because it's firmly grounded, firmly planted, firmly rooted. Now, back to the song. Same thing. I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters. That is the basis of that song, the scripture right here. So in other words, when things come our way, we will not be moved by them because we're firmly planted and we're planted and firmly grounded in Christ, right? All right. So back to the deception piece and how this relates. Um, you can tell the more, the more we live, the more we see the world today that things are different. Um, like I said, just moments ago, our moral compasses are changing. Things are becoming more acceptable and, um, 
you know, we have to be very, very careful with that because scripture talks about deception and how we should not be deceived. It also talks about how the um, during the end of age, the end age, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to, there's going to be a lot of shaking up things that we're going to not necessarily understand. Um, but it talks about it in the Bible, right? So I want us to just to be on alert because Satan is very tricky. He's very cunning. All right. He's a liar, first of all, and he's perverted. So he wants to make the truth seems like a lie and a lie seem like a truth. So he, he, he does that. So we have to be very careful. Um, you know, when we hear certain things, certain things may sound appealing. They may sound like, oh, that's not too bad. But, but, but if it does not line up with the word of God, we cannot accept that as truth. We cannot be down with that as saints of God. Amen. Scripture talks about um, itching ears in uh, 2 Timothy 4. 3 through 5. Let me read that to us real quick. 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 5. It says here, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Wow. Oh, my God. That Now that... Mm. That strikes me as like, wow, really? So there's going to be a time. The time will come when people, we're not going to put up with sound. I shouldn't say we, because God forbid, it's me. Um, but there's going to be a time where people won't put up with sound doctrine. Sound doctrine, meaning the truth, meaning the word of God. And instead, what they're going to do is gather around people who are going to tell them what they want to hear. Mm. Sounds a lot like what's going on today in our society and things like that. You know, we have to be very, very careful with, um, how should I put it? You know, this term freedom, you know, everybody should have these freedoms and should be free to do, you know, what they want and free to say and, and this and that. We have to be very careful with that. Why? Because if these freedoms, um, give way, make an excuse, give reason to say sin is acceptable, uh, uh, that is a big no-no. So that is where we draw the line. Amen. So, you know, we got to be careful with, um, you know, Satan's tricks, you know, things, uh, you know, allowing things in the name of freedom or in the name of inclusion or the name of acceptance or in the name of equality, things of this nature. If it, if these things, freedom, equality, all that, if it is allowing for sin to be accepted and for sin to be called right and made right, that is not right. That is deception. Amen. So we have to be sure that we're viewing, you know, we're in the world, but we're not of it, scripture says, right? So we cannot allow the social views um, and bear with me. I'm not trying to be political because I'm totally not. Um, that is not what this is about. This is more of um, socially, you know, how we dwell in our environments today versus how we see things through the eyes of the kingdom. Amen. No matter what, we have to be obedient to God's word. <clears throat> Amen. We cannot let um, the ways of the world dictate our truths. Amen. Or the truth, because they're not our truths. The truth is the word of God. Amen. So that's that. Amen. So we have to be very, 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 very careful with that and making sure that we don't fall victim to those itching ears that Second Timothy here is talking about. Yeah, we don't want to be caught up with surrounding ourselves with teachers who are going to tell us things that we want to hear. No, what we want to hear and what we should be hearing is according to the word of God. Point blank, period. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So we have to, again, be careful with that. Scripture also talks about a falling away. You know, these things, whoo, they get me stirred up because, you know, Again, as, as a Christian, as followers of Christ, we have to be on guard and on alert about these things. Because um, God in his word, he did not say, okay, only certain ones. Uh, you know, Calvina, you're exempt. Or Susie Smith, you're exempt. It will never happen to you. No, we're all included in this. 
So we have to be ever so spiritually alert to watch for and, and pray about our world and things that are going on around us. Scripture also tells us about that, watching and praying, praying without ceasing. We need to do that to be in communication with God, to be able to know when something is contrary to his word, we are on it. We're like, oh, no, uh-uh. oh, yeah, that, that doesn't sound right. That ain't right. Mm -mm. So we're not going to agree with that. We're not going to put our stamp of approval on that. Amen. All right. So again, back to another scripture talking about falling away. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 2 through 3. There's some good scriptures. I mean, really get you to thinking about, wow, the times that we're in and, um, you know, how we're, you know, really kind of like at risk for some of these certain things. Amen. All right. I'm looking in my Bible, but I actually have it on my phone here. All right. So 2 Thessalonians 2, 2 through 3. Okay. Um, let's see. Actually, I'm going to start at verse three, second Thessalonians two and three. It says, let no one deceive you by any means. Mm. Let no man, let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Wow. And it goes on to say, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, and so on and so forth. But the scripture is talking about a falling away. Paul's talking about a falling away to the, you know, to the Thessalonians. There's going to be a time where people are going to fall away. And what are they falling away from? The faith, the word, the truth. There's going to be a time when that comes. And my God, God forbid it be me. You know, God forbid it be any of us. But we need to be on high alert in regards to that thing. Amen. So another scripture that I want to bring to light too, and this is just as good, 1 Timothy 4 and 1. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. This is God's word, y'all. Can't get no realer than that. It, it can't be any plainer than that. Do you hear what, do you hear what he's saying here? The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith, abandon it, get away from it, go away from it, turn from it, and follow deceiving spirits, follow it, and things taught by demons. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God. So again, we have to be so vigilant to make sure that we are firmly grounded like a tree planted by waters with our roots deeply, deeply embedded in the word of God. Amen. And I may sound like a broken record from message to message, but it's so true and it's so for real that to know the word of God is life. To know the word of life, uh, God is light. You know, that's our guiding light. Um, his word is our compass through it all. So we must be sure that we are studying the word every day. I mean, every day getting some scripture down in our hearts. Like David said, hide the word in my heart so I, that I will not sin against you. Amen. And likewise, we want to hide the word in our heart. So in the case that we don't have our phones where we can pull up the app or we don't have the actual physical Bible to where we can, oh, let me see if that makes sense. And let me make it. No, we already know the Holy Spirit will bring it to our remembrance because we've studied it. Amen. So if someone is telling you some type of freedom, you know, we should all be this and that and, 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 and it just doesn't add up to your spirit because you know what the truth of God's word says. Amen. So let me just check my notes and make sure I touched on all the points that I wanted to tonight. Again, just making sure that we are alert in these times. Too much is going on around us, y'all, that we cannot be lackadaisical Christians, lackadaisical followers of Christ. No, we have to be on, on point and on purpose about our fellowship. Amen. And um, we have to know what we believe and stand on what we believe at all times. There's no wavering. There's no back and forth. There's no tree that's going to fall down. No, we are firmly grounded in Christ and in his word. Amen. God bless you. I hope this message blessed you just as much as it blessed me. And I will see you next week.